Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Dance Dish, where the dance ends and the dish begins. My name is Pussy Control and I am your guest host for today. I would like to welcome our live audience. Today we're gonna get dance history. The word I would use, legendary. All three of our guests have paved a path for dancers, choreographers, and stars to live. So let's meet them, shall we? Please give it up for the legendary Billy Goodson. <laughs> the legendary Tony Selznick. Surprise! And of course, the legendary Julie McDonald. I'm super excited because Julie has been a visionary from the very beginning. And she's gonna tell us how she got started um, as an agent. So I had my own dance studio mm -hmm. from 1976 to 1982. And then when it closed, I would have to say that my life was in a bit of a shambles in so many areas. I was down and out. It's where the magic happens. Well, it didn't feel like that at the moment. It never does. Um, I had heard about this uh, group called Impact, a boot camp for people who wanted to be in the entertainment business but they didn't really know exactly what they wanted to do. So I called my mom, I borrowed again $3,000. It was very expensive for then. And I signed up, it was from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., four days a week. The first week was to figure out what you wanted to do. So I came in with, well, I'm gonna be a manager for dancers, a casting director for dancers, or an agent for dancers. I ended up, well, the only thing that really makes sense is an agent. The next two weeks were spent basically pounding the pavement, going to every agency and asking if, first of all, dance was starting to be really, really hot on MTV, so it was kind of a good time. And I would say, I, I wanna start a dance department, and they all said the same thing. Yeah, sure, we'll give you a desk and a phone and take 50% of everything you bring in. And I was looking for someone to pay me a salary, but nobody offered that deal. So there was a girl in my group who said, I'm gonna introduce you to my agent. And it was, I remember the woman, her name was Terry Hanauer. She was a big commercial actress at the time. She introduced me to Sandy Joseph at Joseph Held Fawn and Ricks, Ricks. Yeah, and, Joe, and her Joe. partner, Brian Ricks. And I figured, well, I've been to every other agency in town. No one's offering me a salary. I might as well just go with the best commercial agency because I had learned by that point that dancers at least were on union contracts for commercials. So I ended up at saying, okay, I'll start at JHR. JHR. And I, I had, my wardrobe consisted of sweat clothes and leotard showing up on a Monday and they went, oh, you're here. Where are we gonna put her? So they sort of forgot I was coming and they gave me a teeny little desk about twice the size of this. Which we still have in our which office. Which we still right have now. in our Probably. office. Yeah. And uh, put me in the uh, kids department. It was fine, I got a desk, I got a phone, I got what they said I was yeah. gonna get. I sat there and I decided to go hang out in some, one of the, the agent's office. And I listened to them, you know, pitch their clients, I listened to them negotiate and I said, I can do this, I already know how to do this. I just felt like the right thing. There was no internet, there was nothing. <laughs> Remember, I put a teeny little ad this big in the variety yeah. and the Hollywood Reporter saying, wanted dancers for representation. And I showed up and 300 people showed up. Oh. And they were good, they were all really good. So that's how I built my first client list and then I had the hard job of trying to talk people into calling me to four dancers because yeah. there was a way people work. Choreographers had their assistants call all the dancers they knew. It was kind of hard to break in yeah. new dancers then like every now and then a choreographer would say bring a couple of friends you know or the dancers would say can I bring so-and-so, she's really good, or he's really good and I think you might like them. Yeah. And so, otherwise they were fair, well, they weren't all closed because it, union work, you had to have a union call. I went to, I called up all the choreographers and said, you know, this is what I'm doing and would you consider, you know, calling me next time you're having an audition. 
There's always a lot of resistance to, to uh, change. It just seems to be the way of the world. There's resistance, people feel threatened. And so I have to say it was not e easy at all. The first person to give me a break was Kenny Ortega, but it was Greg Smith, his casting director, who called me and said, okay, 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 just send me some people for Let's Get Physical. And so I did, and, I, and they were really pleased with the quality of dancers that I sent in. And they were new people that they didn't know. I was going to ask you how many dancers you took from that. First I don't call remember, but like a lot three. of them because they were yeah. so good yeah. and everybody was so eager and they loved the dancers, loved the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Choreographers were not so receptive, right. but they became. I didn't even start with choreographers. I started just with the dancers and then eventually, well, except for the people I knew, like Russell Clark and Sarah Elgart. And like my friends, yeah. my friends from Room to Move with yeah. and Billy. And that's who I started with, you yeah. know. I didn't start with anybody I didn't know. I didn't know anybody. But that's and such that's a great how it goes. Way, and know? then what started happening is I started getting people work. Yeah. So knocks on doors started happening. One of my first jobs with Jeffrey Hornaday was a D O L L. He was so sweet and receptive. There were other people who were not. He called and said, Well, I'm casting this Captain EO thing. So I remember sending people to Captain E.O. and I think I booked like half the cast. One thing I know, I know good dancers. I just know. You do. I, I know, you know, I know what I like. And I knew at that point that not only did they have to be good dancers, I wanted to have a commercial capability of, you know, being able to go out for commercials or... So anyway, it was a slow process, but things moved really, really fast. So if all of a sudden this woman comes from Texas named Teresa Taylor, and she ends up at Bobby Ball, and she's my competition. Well, of course, part of me was like, Ugh. and the other part of me was like, oh, this is a viable business now. That means it, it's not awkward. You were either with JHR or you had nobody. Now they have a choice. You know, and that and that snowballed into and that snowballed everybody to, to a else. lot of other agencies yeah. over the years. It's not always been easy. Yeah. You know, life is like this, yeah. and it was like this for yeah. me, and it was like this for us when we join forces. So, yeah. you know, ups and downs, but we grossed a million dollars worth of business in our first year. Wow. 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 That's amazing. 15 years I stayed at that agency. And Tony, I interviewed Tony's wife to be my assistant. <laughs> I was desperate and I needed somebody. And she came in. She, had a, she was like a big, she had a big job at some studio. And so apparently on the way home, she says to him, why don't you take this job? <laughs> That's what it was, yeah. I was like, oh, so oh my he God. ended up coming in as my assistant, and then it was because of Tony. Finally, he says to me, why don't we go out on our own? Mm -hmm. I was so busy that I couldn't see straight. I get overwhelmed. And, and I just, uh, yeah, it's a good idea. It's a good idea, but how, how's that going to happen? So it was his idea to go out on our own, and we started in 2000 as MSA. I would like to propose a toast to MSA and to your legacy that you literally are leaving all of us. So here's to MSA, Tony and Julia, the Dance Dish. <laughs>